This going on all night then, is it? Come on, come on, get to bed. Edward Nash found guilty of murdering his wife Elizabeth in the garden of their home. But you'll find we had difficulty defending. Uh, Sir Edgar, unfortunately, is no longer available. It's not often he loses. That's really a question of winning or losing, is it? Our phrasing, you know. Guilty or innocent. Neither of them very scientific phrases, but at least they are understandable. Will you have a sherry? I'd like one, please. <laughs> I had hoped that you would consider advising our client on an approach to the Home Secretary. Right, on the existing evidence, certainly not. Or that you give a little of your time to examining or re-examining the evidence already presented? The jury has given its verdict in a case in which I was in no way involved. Thank you. Uh, we would be grateful for an unbiased opinion. <coughs> uh, my colleague, Francis Morton, recommended I come to you. Oh? Yes, he seemed to fi think you might find the case of interest. No, I'm, I'm sorry, I couldn't undertake it. Uh, the man's appeal has been dismissed. Oh, I'm not implying. Now, please forgive me, a uh, miscarriage of justice. I am glad to hear it. A more, uh, more a question of guilt. You think he's innocent? I've come to believe that, yes. Based on what evidence? None. None at all. That's rather unprofessional, surely? I don't think so. Well, what was the line of defence? Diminished responsibility. You see, Nash couldn't remember what he had done. He still can't. No, that's no defence, unless you can show you didn't know at the time. Quite, and that's what the prosecution said. Even if there were amnesia, there was nothing to prove that it wasn't caused simply from shock. Facts, motivation, we didn't have a hope. Well, I fail to see why you still consider he may be innocent. So do I. He's a telephone man. Why write? Sir? Hardy would like to drop in, he says. A new secretary? James Edward Nash, give me his file, would you? He got life, sir. I was on the case, too. To drop in, to discuss details. Sounds all right. Not hardy, no. Walk in, yes. Ring up in the middle of the night, yes. But? I don't know. Nash always shouting his innocent. Perhaps he's found someone mug enough to take it in. He can't have. Went out in the garden, smashed his wife on the back of the neck and killed her, no question. Remember it all clearly, do you? Yes. All the details? Yes. Good. Read it up again. Sir? Every word. I'll be asking you a question. But he's guilty, sir. I know he's guilty. I know bloody well he's guilty. Sorry, Not that I'm worrying about. That's why Hardy should send me a nice little note saying he wants to drop in to discuss details. I couldn't have killed her. I loved her, my Liz. I thought the world of her. Tell me about her. Same age as me. Nearly as tall. Blonde. Slim. What do you want to know? And everything. Tell me about your marriage. It was happy enough. Well, I want to hear you talk about it. Yeah, all right. Well, she was working in a shop when I first met her, an outfitter's, and I was on the road then selling. Shirts, I believe. Mm -hmm. Just before I made a start on my own. Now, we began having lunch together and that, and six months later we were married. Fifteen years ago, that was. And then what? You opened up your stall on the market? Yes, yes, that was a starter, and then I got a lock-up, and we kept them both running between us. And she could sell this. Where did you live? Then, you mean? Yeah. Well, we had a bit of a flat, and then when 
Things got steady, we got the house. Were you happy? Happy as most, I suppose. It was more busy than anything. And the shop and the stall, it kept us at it. With no children? No. Right. Now, tell me about your military training. What about it? You received an extensive course in unarmed, unarmed combat, have you? In the Paris, yes. You were taught to kill with your bare hands instantly. We all were. Now, did you have occasion when you were in Malaya to kill by this method? No, nope, never. But you did kill? With a rifle, I said that at the trial. Indeed you did, yes. There are thousands of men walking around trained to kill. Now, I was always very careful. I didn't get into fights, and if there was trouble, I walked away. You couldn't trust yourself? Well, no, I suppose not. I don't know. Have you received what a temper? Everyone has. Uncontrollable? I can keep myself in check. Always? Yes. Right. Well, now tell me about that Sunday. What you can remember. I worked in the shop Sunday morning. I always did. Liz caught up with the housework. I went home, we had lunch, that's all. Well, the next thing I was sitting in a chair, dozing, and the police came. Liz was in the garden. Some kids had seen her. Well, she liked being in the garden. She was mad about Rosa's shoes. And that was all? I didn't kill her, I loved her. Mr. McAllister has explained your position to you. Yes, yes. I loved her. I'm innocent. Mr. Nash, we need facts. We need new evidence. Tell Dr. Hardy about your other woman. I'm innocent. I want a retrial. Mr. Nash, I'm innocent. I want a retrial. Tell about Shirley Houghton. I'm innocent. I want a retrial. Shirley Houghton. Oh. I wouldn't call her much of a swat. Nash used to visit her two or three times a week. She's married now, Shirley Legg. Her husband's a coal merchant, or works for a coal merchant, Terry Legg. Actress, or...? Well, oh. singer, off and on, when she could get work. <laughs> she used to have a stall in the market selling curtain material. That's where Nash met her. Oh, she wasn't married then? No, that's only recent. Shirley Houghton at the trial. She was engaged, though. Well, thank you very much, Fleming. Oh, pleasure. Glad to help in any way I can. Most generous of you. Well, I'm thinking of your time. It is valuable. Well, I hope to be paid for it. Yes, still, if I can save you from the run-around. Most considerate. Well, I mean, he is guilty. If there's the slightest doubt about it, it might be worth your while. But even confirmation of guilt would be worthwhile, don't you agree? Oh, yes, of course. Right, then, perhaps you'd be good enough to tell me the manner of the arrest. Well, it's uh, six months ago now. Two children in an allotment behind the house saw the body of a woman lying by the rose border in Nash's garden. They told their parents to telephone us. I see, that was the Sunday now. What time is that? Uh, three o'clock. Ash and I arrived to find his wife, Elizabeth. Oh, yes. It's a broken neck. Oh, the pathologist gave the cause of death as being dislocation of the cervical vertebrae caused by a severe blow to the back of the neck. Ah, uh -huh. the report's here. Oh, thank you. Oh, we knocked at the house. Nash took his time about replying. He seemed to be in a state of shock. Uh, oh, was it raining? Yes. Yes, the ground was soaked, raining all morning. Ah, yes, I see. Look, these are footmarks, are the arrows out here. Hmm. Um, they were checked with Nash's shoes, I think. Hmm. Yes, yes. I think. Might I see the comparison? Yes, yes. Uh, ah. Rather than if you like. Okay. Seems to have hurt one of his feet, hasn't it? Yes. On examination, we found he'd bruised his hand, too, about here. What were you expecting for his military training? Ah, oh, yes. Uh, what explanation did he give? Not at all. Said he couldn't remember a thing. Ah, I see. And the medical report? Well, it's the shock, of course. Uh, no mental disorder. Good general health. Average intelligence. May I borrow that, too? Oh, help yourself. Thank you very much. Now, uh, the motive was put forward as being this... Uh, Shirley Hatton, hmm? Not that we needed a motive. No, of course not. No. But she was pressing him for marriage, yes. Sorry, I don't understand. I thought she was engaged to a Mr. Legg. Uh, she was. That didn't bother her. She preferred Nash. <laughs> I see. I'll um, give you her address if you like. Uh, may I? Please do. Anything to help? You know me. Oh, is he? Oh, I keep saying I go and visit him, but I never do. I don't suppose he'd want me, not now. He appears to be well. Strong, anyway. Stand any amount of punishment, Jimmy would. 
He maintains that he's innocent. I read about it, yes. Might be, for all I know. I'd like you to tell me about your relationship with him, if you don't mind. What do you want to know? Were you in love with him? I think I was. Not sure? No. I didn't think anything come of it, so I didn't let myself... Is he in love with you, would you say? I don't know. We never talked about it much, love and that. Not seriously. And yet you wanted to marry him, I understand. Wanted, yes. He was already married. I was sort of engaged to Terry. How often did you see Nash? Oh, about three times a week. I had a flat then. He used to come round. He was a laugh. We had good fun. We thought we were getting the best of both worlds. Did Mr. Legg know about it? Not at first, no. When he found out? Oh, he threatened a bit. I told him he could have his ring back if he wanted. I bought it any road. Oh, he couldn't very well take it back, could he? If he'd caused a bit of a fuss, I might have thought more of him, but no, not Terry. Sulked a bit, that's all. Then he just ignored it altogether, pretended it wasn't happening. While you went on seeing that. He made two a Terry. It was suggested at the trial that Nash killed his wife because of you. Yeah. Do you believe that? I don't know. I thought so at first and... and afterwards I wasn't so sure. Oh, sit down, for heaven's sake, will you? Well, why was that? A look he gave me at the trial. What sort of a look? Hate, I think. That's why I never made any effort to go and see him. Hate? Yes. Oh. I thought about it for weeks and... Then I said to Terry, well, it wasn't any use. No use waiting. He'd got life and that look on his face. So I said to Terry, let's get married. So we did. Well, it wasn't any use waiting. Was it? Of the herald angels sing glory to a new <laughs> He's back then. Back from the jug, our Mr. Innocent. Innocent? You must be joking. Sorry, I thought you were out, and so I... Well, I had a late call, but you were coming in when I left. That was two hours ago. Oh, was it? Yes. What on earth have you been doing? Nothing. Will you go back? I'll, I'll come on. In a few minutes. I could meet tomorrow morning. I know you. The Nash case. Innocent or guilty? Oh, well. I can amuse myself. I've decided to wait for you. Don't mind me. Well, I'm not going to answer. Well, the evidence of guilt is plain enough. I found nothing whatever to dispute. Perfectly good motive. Though, of course, it's not even necessary for the prosecution to show a motive. Footprints, his military training, marks on his hands, all perfectly good circumstantial evidence. So retrial's out of the question. But? I suppose he's telling the truth. Your solicitor seems to think so, and I think I do too. Well, that would make him legally not guilty. Well, yes. So I have to work on that assumption. All right, then. Now what? Schizophrenia. Oh, come on, the darling. They'd have spotted that before now, wouldn't they? 
said his mental health is perfectly sound, according to the report. I suppose schizophrenia might explain his amnesia. It could also be caused by shock, on the other hand. And that, my darling, would make him legally guilty. I've just been told Nash is Colonel Prison Officer. When? Within the hour. Same method as before, apparently. Blow to the back of the neck. I take it you're still employed by the defence? I certainly am. Oh, I just wondered, you're first on the coroner's list, that's all. Still can't act for both. Not much style about it this time, though. None at all, I'd say. All right, I'll be over as soon as I can. Any use of me waiting up for you? Well, my darling, see you at breakfast. Oh, well. Sleep tight, Dr. Hardy. Right. Let's have it, then. Come on. Come on, move it along. Move it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get a move on. Quick speed up. Come on. Come on. Move it, mate. Come on. You like a lot of other things. Come on. Come on. Come on. No evidence of fighting. No. No blood. Fingernails normal. Shoes unscuffed. No contusions or signs of injury to the face. Neck. Yes. Yes, I thought so too. Would you like to see Nash now? After Dr. Hardy arrives, I think. Ruins all relationships, all friends. Yes, Dr. Hammond is most upset, then so am I. So, were the prison officers aware of his military training? Oh, yes, we've got several. But beyond taking extra care, there's nothing we can do. I'm short staffed, as you know. I, and I agree. Yes, I understand. Yes. This wretched business will undermine the whole morale. Please go in, Doctor. Thank you. May I? Please do. You'll be carrying out the post-mortem, of course, won't you? Yes. Would you care to be there? I would, yes. It'll all happen in a few seconds, won't it? Lewis and Machen were out there locking the cell doors. Machen was distracted somehow. Lewis came into here, and that was that. We'll talk to Machen shortly. Have you examined Nash yet? No, I haven't. I thought I'd wait for you and Dr. Jacobs. We might as well all do it together. That's very kind of him. I've asked for him to be transferred to my medical unit, huh. where we've got top security facilities there. Not that there appears to be much wrong with him now. He was suffering from shock. Also had a bit of a limp. Oh, that explained those marks, didn't it? Yes, he probably twisted his ankle or something. Oh. 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 
Darkness. Stand still. Get your arms by your sides. Move! So this is a bastard, is it? Kill Lewis Stone dead. Quickly, move! Now, come on now. There's nothing whatever to worry about. We're simply going to examine you. Uh, Dr. Hardy here, you already know. And this is Dr. Jacobs, who's going to report to the coroner. All right? Now, let's come over here. Now, we'll undo this thing, shall we? Hammond. Yes, of course. Dr. Hammond, I would like there to be a psychiatric examination. It's routine, yes. It's part of my function here. Uh -huh. Did you carry out such an examination when you, when Ash first came here? Yes, I did. He seemed perfectly normal to me. Of course, he's outside my qualifications, but I can't help wondering about the possibility of schizophrenia. No, definitely not. Mm -hmm. Well, as I say, it's outside my field, and so I shall have to advise the defence to employ a psychiatrist. By all means, if you wish. I think schizophrenia most unlikely. There are none of the symptoms. No withdrawal, no delusions. No, he's perfectly normal. I see. Thank you very much, Doctor. But by all means, bring someone in if you wish. Right. <coughs> all right, so far. What about the ankle? Nothing. Or would you like to have a look? I would, ma'am. Certainly no bruising. Is that hurt? No. Nope. Sure? Look, when this happened, you were limping. Did you know that? No. Nope. Right, I want to see you on your feet. What for? I want you to walk across the floor. It seems all right now. And back again. Probably loss of circulation from sitting cross-legged or something. It's gone now, anyway. Right, thank you. Okay. Come on out, every hand. Benjamin Arthur Lewis, prison officer, age 32, died of dislocation of a cervical vertebrae caused by a blow to the back of the neck. A blow, I must add, delivered with great force and accuracy. Mm, I see. Pretty much the same as when he killed his wife. That would seem. Right, well, thank you, Dr. Hardy. At least now we know. Do we? We know that Nash killed this man. We know he killed his wife in a similar manner. Yes, but we don't know why he did. Uh, no, but... Well, in the first place, I would suggest that you employ a psychiatrist. Oh? May be able to help, may not. All right. You see, he says he can't remember this either. <laughs> I was afraid of that. He says there's no reason to kill a prison officer. Well, that won't carry weight in court. No, no, no. But said it might be caused by some deep-rooted psychological trouble. Such as? Well, schizophrenia. Really? <laughs> and they say the Dr. Hammond doesn't think so. Hammond? He's only one. Well, he's a qualified psychiatrist, but he's more than I am. I'm only thinking that it is worth checking. Yes, yes, of course. You will make arrangements. Yes, certainly I will. Mm. Good. But apart from that, I'm afraid I have no recommendations to make at the moment. There are one or two other things that I would like to pursue, though. Oh? Now, I'd rather not talk about them at the moment. Well, couldn't you give me some idea? No, I don't want to mislead you. Yes, but I I've got nothing. <laughs> My dear McAllister, neither have I. But on both occasions, he developed a limp. I find that most interesting. You see what I mean, Terry? Well, those marks. Yeah, he was dragging his foot. What is that? Well, I knew that. I reported it. I know you did. But why was he limping? This one very interesting fact emerges. I don't know why he's limping. Just a bit of a limp, that's all. Look, marks similar to that were found on the cell floor when he killed the prison officer. So he had a limp both times. Perhaps it affects him when he gets excited or something. Look, you reported it in the first place. Describe it to me. It's just a limp. Was it in the leg? Was it in the ankle? Where? I don't know. I didn't see it. What? Well, how soon did it disappear? Well, Ash and I arrived within the hour, so it must have been before that. Well, how did you know he'd been living? Well, because of the marks on the grass and path. You mean to say nobody questioned why a man should have a limp that disappears so quickly? No. Did you know what reason he had for limping? No. Well, thank you very much, Fleming. Being a great help. With a rifle at 50 yards. Seven of them there were, and they hadn't seen us. With plenty of time, we just lay down and took aim just the same as if we'd been on the ranges. 
You ever killed anyone, have you? We're discussing you. I'm nothing to discuss. On the contrary, you've committed murder. So you tell me. With no explanation. I can't remember, I've told you. Yes? Well, I can't. You can remember well enough, in my opinion. Right. You'd rather not. All right. You can remember everything else? Yes. Yes, I just can't remember that. It's just the same as when they told me I'd killed Liz. Now, I wouldn't kill Liz. I wouldn't even... But you did. Yes, well, how do I know that? The police say so, you say so, but I don't. I say I'm innocent. You're not innocent, you're guilty. And now you've killed a prison officer as well. I don't know why you've killed him. I hope you do. Oh, listen, look, what was his name? Lewis, Benjamin Lewis, maybe married with kids. Now, why would I want to kill him? If I didn't like him or dislike him, I didn't even know him. I'd got no reason to kill him and I'd got no reason to kill Liz. Think. I've been thinking. For six bloody months, I've been thinking. Yeah, let me tell you something, Nash. People who lose their memories, people who have amnesia, they don't just have it for isolated periods lasting Not an amnesia, hour or so. blackouts. Well, you've not suffered blackouts at other times. You've been quite normal. You are normal. Your blood pressure's normal. Your heart's normal. You think normally, logically. If you've discovered you weren't normal, you wouldn't be in this prison. You'd be in hospital or perhaps Broadmoor. So it's normal to kill two people, is it? I mean, I could kill some more if I wanted. I'd still be normal. There's no need to be flippant. Well, then what is normal? You tell me! To be responsible for your actions. Look, you've killed a prison officer. I don't know why you've killed him. Possibly anger or frustration. Both. Perhaps some grievance which at that moment took possession of you so that you could hardly help yourself. He may have said something, insulted you even. I've no idea. But you killed him, Nash, and for that you are responsible. But I didn't know. If I did it, I didn't know I was doing it. I didn't know anything until I saw him on the floor of the cell. I thought he'd collapsed or something, had a breakdown. I'm sorry, Nash, that went to. Well, it'll damn well have to do, it's all I know about it. All right, Nash. All right. No, don't! <laughs> I didn't know. If I did, I'd tell you I've got nothing to lose. I'm here for life. Sorry, Nash. Why would a man limp only occasionally? Darling, you know just as well as I do. I do not know. Well, neither do I. John, I'm tired. I've been running around all day long. So have you. Can't we just rest this evening? John? Yes. John, I'm talking to you. But we're not in the lab. We're not in the surgery. I don't want to hear about other people's ailments when I'm in here. I want to rest and relax. Now, you go ahead. You look very relaxed to me. With my husband. You're quite right. I accept your opinion. It's not a neurosis. It could be paralysis, but what? No, John. The question is, when? When what? When are we going to have an evening without your dragging something or other in here? When? Look here, darling. Just help me for a few minutes and I'll shove all these books back on the shelf. No, I won't. Joe! I mean it. Tomorrow I'll help you all I can. Tonight, I refuse. Joe, there may be a man in prison who's innocent. And he may just as possibly be innocent tomorrow morning. I have patients who may be taken to their beds at this very moment with flu or measles or bellyache. But when I'm in here, just sometimes, I want to be able to forget about them. I'm sorry. Yes, so am I. Have a drink. Yes, please. What would you like? No, I don't mind. You choose. There you are, darling. Thank you. Well, what shall we say? To a quiet evening. I know. What? Tomorrow I'll go and see Shirley Houghton. Perhaps she'll help me about that limp. A limp? No. A very short duration, possibly an hour, even less. She may never have had a limp. He ever complained to you about a pain or cramp in his leg? He was always very fit. I'm not suggesting there's anything really wrong with his leg. He used to throw me about the room acting a fool. <laughs> Violent? Like. No, it was just in fun. He didn't know his own strength. 
He chased me, I'd screen the place down. The landlord threatened to throw me out once. <laughs> you carry on like this often? It was normal. Weren't you ever afraid he might lose control? Sometimes, a bit. Did he ever strike you? No, he'd pretend to, you know, raise his hand on that, but he always stopped then, something seemed to come over him. He was in the Paris. I think he was afraid of what he might do without thinking, you know. He told me about it once. How he was trained to kill, he said it frightened him. Did you ever see him lose control? In temper, you mean? Why, yes. Was he jealous of your engagement? I don't think so, no. It would have been normal for him to be jealous, wouldn't it? I thought that. Whether he didn't want me to know he was or what, I don't know. That's why I never knew properly where I stood with him. Yes. No, he... He never lost his temper, not once. It was all sort of pretending. Pretending? What? Oh, everything. Ach, we were both as bad. I pretended he wasn't married. He pretended I wasn't engaged. If we didn't want to think about anything, we didn't. It's all sort of unreal. Three nights a week, we just... pretended. Tell me, did he ever pretend to have a limp? Not a limp, no. Yeah? One night... One night, I, I thought he was pretending, but he wasn't. He was ill. Ill? He stayed the night with me. He had to. Well, he, he didn't do that, not normally. We were in bed. Yes? I've forgotten all about that until just now. He was always so healthy. I, I'd never seen him like that before. Now, I want you to keep looking straight at me and tell me when you can see my fingers. No. You can't see them at all. Quite sure? Right. Now, I want you to tell me when you see my fingers move. Right? Yeah. yeah. Up one? Yeah. Up. yeah. And that one? Yeah. Good. Now, this way. You see them? No. Sure? Yeah. Right. The bottom. Bottom one? Yes. No. Stop. No. Mm, that's very good. Okay. Lie back, will you? No, 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 don't you look. You put your head back. Now, can you tell me when you feel this? Yeah. 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 Now, I want to take a sample of your blood. Why, there's nothing wrong, is there? How are you today? I don't know. I've been charged. I've told them I know nothing about it. Hammond doesn't believe me. Well, you don't believe me. No one does. I've never said I don't believe you, Nash. I've only said that amnesia isn't very satisfactory as a defense. Well, what else can I say? If I can't remember, I can't remember. I could make something up for you. Is that what you want, a story? No, no, of course not. Uh, Dr. Hardy has suggested that we have our own psychiatrist in to examine you. A psychiatrist? Hammond's a bloody psychiatrist. No, our own psychiatrist, Nash. Now, I've been in touch with the university and they've recommended a Dr. Lever. He's had a special interest in criminal psychology for many years. 
He's coming to see you tomorrow. Well, he'll say the same as Hammond, because, you know, they back one another up. No, that's nonsense. Look, I've explained all the details to Dr. Lever, and he's most interested. Is he? Yes. Most interested. You know, this attitude isn't doing you any good, Nash. We're all doing everything we can. Are you? Yes, yes, we are. Well, I don't trust you, any of you. All right, you're at liberty well, to... Liberty! Liberty! <laughs> you know what I mean. Yes. Yes, well, I will be at liberty, but not with your help. I shall get out of here the first chance I can. Nash, listen. Yes. Nash. But I shall get out of here very quickly. In fact, you can tell your psychiatrist. You'll be lucky to find me here tomorrow. <coughs> Good night, Dr. Hardy. Is it that late? I've checked. There's nothing left to do in the surgery. Right. You tell my wife that I'll be in in a minute. Sandra, would you tell Dr. Hardy that if he wants to eat, he'd better come now? I couldn't. Why not? He'd throw something at me. Oh, would he? He said he wasn't to be disturbed. I have just given you an hour of my time. Okay. And I've cooked your supper. Xenian seizure, Vassaman negative. Mm. Read that. Might give you an appetite. Darling, I'm rather busy. I thought you wanted me to help you. Well, I'm trying to. Todd's paralysis. What the hell is that? Todd's paralysis. Might possibly be what you're looking for. And that casserole won't be more than ten minutes. Nash? Delicious. That was perfectly ordinary. I quite forgot the rabbit could taste so good. Well, you can volunteer for the washing up if you like. Right? No, don't. Leave it. Now, what am I going to do about Nash? Must get the very best specialist for him. What about Anderson? John, I thought we'd agreed. Agreed about what? Not to bring work in here unless we could possibly avoid it. Right. Now, sit down. And we'll discuss it in the morning. I don't really know that I cannot talk about it. But darling, we'll end up talking about nothing else. Now what shall we talk about? I don't mind. Anything you like. <sighs> it's very nice. Yes, isn't it? <laughs> yes, I feel quite content. So do I. I suppose if you can stand him, Anderson is the right man for the job. Coming out, Nash? Come on!
But of course you're all anxious to know Mr. Anderson's opinion, as indeed I am. It's only right that we should all be here. But I must emphasize that so far Mr. Anderson is only investigating a possibility. We are all equally anxious to get at the truth, Dr. Hardy. He may be able to help us or he may be not able to help us. Yeah, it's very good of you to bring him in anyway, Dr. Hardy. Yes, it wasn't an easy decision to make. I'm sure it's given us all cause for great concern. Thank you, Mr. I'm sure you've acted entirely in good faith. Dr. Hardy, could you come in a moment, please? Will you forgive me, gentlemen? You uh, felt this case would be of interest to me? I had hoped so, yes. Take the ophthalmoscope. See for yourself. Dr. Nash, I have to ask you to look into this again, I'm afraid. There's nothing wrong with my eyes. I know, perfect. there's nothing wrong with your eyes at all, but just keep quite still, will you? Yes? Oh, I think. What? Papilledema? Unilateral papilledema. Oh, of course, yes. I shall need every facility. Certainly. But, uh, on the whole, yes, I think I agree. Most interesting. McAllister, it'll be at least a week before I can give an opinion. Of course, Mr. Anderson. Uh, Dr. Lever, may I care to take a look? Dr. Hammond, too, for that matter. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. On the whole, yes, interesting. You'll make all the necessary arrangements, won't you? Howdy. Good day to you, gentlemen. Well, I hope so. I'm afraid it would mean the prisoner leaving the prison here, under escort, of course, for a specialist hospital. Leaving the prison? I'm sure you would not wish it to be said that you would not give the defence every facility. No, but I... Mr. Anderson, can you in fact now confirm that this is the cause? Undoubtedly, yes. I hasten to add that it was a mere suspicion on my part. No, it was more than that, John. Good man, your husband. Impressed me. Very kind of you to say so, Mr. Anderson. Not often impressed. No, I must confess that, first of all, I thought in terms of some personality disorder. Not schizophrenia? It's impossible. No, 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 no. Definitely not. At the time? No, never. Quite. A cute schizophrenic episode, even with energetic treatment, would last a week or more. Certainly not an hour or so. I realize that now, of course. <laughs> not your fault, Harry, not your fault. Can't know everything. Well, shall we go into the house? Excellent idea. That was my only reason for calling in a psychiatrist. I do hope I may be forgiven. Worth trying. As it turned out, Dr. Lever simply agreed with me. Of course. Nash is entirely sane. Lead on, my dear. Mr. McAllister? For you, Mr. Anderson. Brandy, whiskey? Uh, brandy, please. Uh, I still don't quite understand. What is wrong with you? Mr. Anderson. Hello, old chap. Carry on. I'm sure you'd explain much better than I can. Oh, quite possibly. <laughs> well, look, this limp. Brandy, Dr. Hunter. Please, Mrs. Hardy. See, Shirley Houghton told me that one night when Nash was with her, he was taken ill and he struck out at her. The odd thing was that he didn't seem to be aware of having done it. A stroke or what? Oh, stroke, certainly not. Now, as to exactly what it was, I puzzled about that for a long time. Well, naturally, Hardy. Combination's very rare. First, I thought some sort of a seizure. Reasonable, yes. Jacksonian fit, perhaps. Anybody suffering from a localized Jacksonian seizure would almost invariably be conscious. Yes, and it was then that you suggested Todd's paralysis. As a matter of fact, uh, it did occur to my wife, too. Indeed? Excellent, my dear. Oh, just, just an accident, really. I happened to be leafing through Davidson. Uh, Todd's paralysis. A rare sequel of epileptic seizure. The Nash isn't an epileptic, surely. Oh, no, I'd have thought it out. Uh, this is what's known as a psychical epileptic equivalent, not a fit, but replacing a fit. Hmm? A combination of Todd's paralysis and post-epileptic automatism has seldom been described. I find it most interesting. Delighted you call me in, Hardy. And that would be caused by what, a, a brain tumour? Oh, yes, yes, of course, a brain tumour. Left frontal silent area here, affecting the right side of the body, in this instance the right leg for perhaps half an hour. Growing tumour, of course, focal source of irritation here, setting off a discharge and spreading here to the motor area of the cortex, here. Yeah. My report will explain in full detail. A brain tumour. Please. Look, the uh, striking out, uh, in this case, with great violence and with accuracy, was post-epileptic automatism. The limp, Todd's paralysis, both occurring when Nash was in a state of coma, and both caused by the brain tumour 
as Mr. Anderson has described. I see. Thank you. Uh, both of you. Well done, Hardy. Most concise. This is excellent, my dear. What is it? Oh, Napoleon. I'm wondering about the legal complexities. Wouldn't have a clue, old chap. Brain scan, carotid angiography. Couldn't risk ventriculography, obviously, as I wasn't prepared to operate immediately. But there we are. The old ophthalmoscope told the tale anyway, didn't it, Hardy? But at least it led us to investigate further. Brandy, Mr. McGanston. Oh, please. It would seem to be operable. Operable? Well, that makes him innocent. So if he's cured? Yes. Now, I think we should press for a trial on the second charge of murder. Oh, I wouldn't know about that, Hardy. Never have understood these legal chaps. Baffle me. Depending very much upon Dr. Hammond's report, it is possible the Director of Public Prosecutions may decide to offer only formal evidence. You know, that would certainly facilitate matters. You know, my dear, and you that's know. a very lovely brooch. Oh, thank you. So you mean on Nash's acquittal? Yes, on Nash's acquittal, a review of the first murder trial will be inevitable. Well, Eight course, talking shots, you know. Let's possible. leave it to these chaps. Mm -hmm. Now, let's see. I think... Uh, oh.